Okay, um, I'm starting the recording. Um, hi, welcome everyone to TESOL virtual conference call IS um, open sim for ELT. Um, and today, uh, Heike, I'm very glad and honored to, um, in, to have invited Heike to show us on open sim. sim. And she, she's an open virtual world expert here. And um, um, so without further ado, let's welcome Heike. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. And uh, I'm delighted that Doris <laughs> is here as well with us. And uh, I hope since, since I had a little presentation this earlier already about our results of the EVA sessions, I would like to focus a little bit more on uh, why open sim why not second life and i'd like to show you doris's work in both of the worlds and how that um has kind of enriched her language teaching and learning uh, her te language teaching practice and what she's done because it's truly amazing and she was really the reason for us to run the storytelling session and she was our inspiration our guide in open sim she's the open sim copyright pirate queen copyright uh, copy queen <laughs> she's the one who equipped uh, our open sim island with the most beautiful objects ever so really she is the star today and i'm really pleased that she can make it also with the timing uh, of joining this session and uh, so um i would like to start a little presentation because the uh, this is to share some links up front and to explain the background of what we came through for, yeah. So I'm very happy to be showing this. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, it, it is fairly the same presentation and this morning, except for a couple of references. And uh, I would like to um, thank Randall for showing us a little bit around Education Islands. And I'm delightful, and we'll, we'll do in a minute, show you a part of Education Island that has to do with Doris, yeah? Um, these links and references, I'm quite happy to put them in the text chat in a minute when I pass over. Um, the Education Islands have been in Second Life for 12, 13 years, nearly now. And here you will find the link to Education, which Randall demonstrated this morning and his beautiful uh, water region next to Education 1. And now we've set up Education Islands in OpenSim also. And OpenSim, this address needs to be put into a what's called a viewer. So it doesn't go via a website and same like with the other link, second live link actually ends up addressing a certain area in a viewer. In second life, it's mostly the second life viewer and in education, it's, well, we, we use third party viewers, viewers like Firestorm, for example, Firestorm viewer, for example. Uh, there are others around, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Firestorm viewer. The uh, uh, EVO session, Immersive Storytelling, is documented completely on our wiki. So VLanguage, if all of the links you forget, um, this wiki uh, link is the one that brings you to a complete wiki where we not only added information about the Education Islands, we added information about the publications of our residents, uh, the EO funded projects, which I've done, basically the complete resource center is vlanguages.pbworks.com. So if you forget any of the other sessions, um, this Canvas link is the EVO session, which we just did, took place in Canvas, but you, uh, you can enroll in Canvas with this link, but you don't have to because we're moving bit by bit all of the beautiful resources to the wiki for public display. So, I mean, Canvas is a login procedural thing, um, but 
as I said, we, we will move. Uh, we've already moved a lot, but we haven't done the complete lot. But as I said, this is where you find the source. Um, last week was the Virtual World Best Practice in Education Conference in Second Life, which is one of the largest conferences for educators. And it has quite a world ranking because it takes place mostly in the American time zone. And it's run by these people who work for really, really top level universities like the Harvards of this world and the MITs of this world. So I was delighted and honored to be a keynote there for our V Languages strand. Uh, also together with Doris and Helena, we presented there when Harry met Jeannie or how to fall in love with fan fiction. Um, but the most important thing is what led us into taking us into OpenSIM. And I think this addresses also the group of people here who are broadly interested in 3D spaces. Like we heard from Aaron just now about Minecraft, how he's actually even set up servers, administers it. We heard from Vans how Minecraft MOOC in the, I think the seventh consecutive year has, uh, has been a breakthrough even this year again. They've done so fantastic work with Minecraft. Uh, it's a beautiful, rich resource. And what we did was last year is we compared all of the different uh, settings. We've, well, we looked into it. We, we, we called on the experts. Yeah. So when we heard, okay, there's Immerse Online, we called on the expert of Immerse Online and it was, Lukas Palacek, and he presented to us Immerse Inside Out as a teacher that he's been using it. He told us more about what students have to do. Is it free of charge? What can they do? So we have had a huge long evaluation rubric that looked at all of these different worlds on many different angles. Um, is it free? Is it safe for children? How difficult is it to get in? Um, what can you do there? Can you just change clothes or look good? Or can you actually manipulate the spaces? Can you have your own room? Um, what, what is the, um, does it do voice chat, text chat? Do you need a, an HMD, a headset to be there? Um, how easy does it run on different devices? And, and, and we asked tons of questions, yeah? And it's a big, huge evaluation grid, which I'd love you to look at um, it compares it all. And in the end, what we did is we, we made a hit list, yeah? And the hit list was just so fantastic for us because we voted for the most popular one. And you can see here in our main presentation, that's again, V Language Wiki. Um, we went down, we, we voted for the number 18 and the number 17 and the number 16 and, num and so forth. Fortnite number 50, which was mentioned by Jeff Kuhn earlier. Um, fan base, even a little app, we just looked at everything. All space, VR chat, VR chat doesn't even have chat, mind you. Just, you know, it's very difficult with anything with keyboard. Uh, Minecraft was number six. I think it should be really a lot, lot higher. But there was World of Warcraft, and there was especially World of Warcraft classics, which people liked for some reason or used. I don't know. CoSpace is a fantastic app for even cross devices with tablets. It works ever so well. It's a multiplayer builder game and a single player execution game. Second Life was number three, Active Worlds, interestingly, number two. And why did we vote for OpenSim number one? Is It has a number of reasons. And I'd like to outline these reasons for you. Uh, one of which is, it's the same technology as Second Life. Yeah. So there's a world you can build, you can manipulate, as you know. And it runs on only PCs and it runs on a PC that has a fairly good graphics card. It doesn't run on a mobile, it doesn't run on a tablet, not on a Chromebook, which is very sad for so many of us. However, if it, whatever it does on the PC it works well. I'm just looking at the chat, somebody's had a question, no? Uh, 
the results of the, the platform rubric. I'm sharing the links in a minute. I'll pass over to Doris in a second, and then I'll share all the links, if that's OK. But be assured, it's on V Languages, PV Works. It's, everything is on here, yeah? So OpenSIM has two major advantages to, to Second Life, yeah? And the, the major advantages is, well, it's the same technology. It also looks the same, it feels the same. You can build the same, everything. But with OpenSIM, you can privatize the area where, and the little island that you, 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 you set, it set up. That means you, there are hosts yeah, who run OpenSIM spaces. And ours, for example, is Kitely. There's open grid, there's hyper grid, there's uh, craft worlds, there's there's about 50 different hosts of open sim service on the free market, which again is a beautiful thing is because if I set up a beautiful island on Kitely and say Kitely the provider runs into financial trouble and closes, forecloses, we've had a number of beautiful platforms foreclose on us. Remember Google Plus and, and Google Lively and all sorts. So, but if Kitely forecloses, it doesn't matter. We'll pack up and we'll set up the same SIM on another open SIM provider server. Exactly the same. And I've done this. I've done it with the open SIM island that we had in um, Guinevere. Yeah, we had one island there and I moved it to Kitely. I just unpacked it, boom, it was all there. Incredible. So that's the one big thing. So with the privacy issue, which helps us for our learners, we have no minimum age entry like in Second Life. In Second Life, the minimum age entry of people is 16, which totally takes out our main target group, children, yeah, as language learners. Aaron, bye for you. <laughs> And so in, in, in OpenSIM, we can take young learners and we can close the islands for privacy issues. We can host them totally invisible. Um, in Italy, uh, the world well, Edmondo has been for 15 years, it's been running. It hosts schools, teachers, everything, but nobody knows about this. There are hundreds of teachers in this and thousands of students in this environment, but nobody knows because it's closed for anybody outside. Vance, it's been a pleasure. So I'm passing over to, um, to Doris. And whilst I'm doing this, and Doris, if you want to start talking, what I've done is I've, I've started opening your domain, like your place in Second Life. So I'm here at, on Edunation. That's her castle and her the start of her fantastic project. And here we are on Edunation in OpenSIM. And here's Story standing in front of me with her headsets because she was the, the DJ <laughs> for our last party. Yeah, so this is Doris, beautiful Doris. And uh, all of this around us is basically her work. So fire it away, Doris, I'm going to pass this over to you. I can keep screen sharing if you like. And you tell me where to go, or you can happy to provide with the the slides to continue with your slides because we're here. Oh, okay. Uh, are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. I I mute uh, Zoom. Uh, so I'm talking here in OpenSIM. Would you like it's me to ID. show your An slides or or use show oh. the slides or whatever? Oh, you want my slides? No, whatever <laughs> you want to do. <laughs> Up to you. It's over to you. I'll stop. <laughs> uh, I, I have a slide, you know. As a matter of fact, cool. we have Go two ahead. Of slides. So, well, uh, so you can come uh, with me and uh, I'll take you where the slides are. Okay. <laughs> hey, you, can, you can describe what they are looking at. Well, in a nutshell, what Doris has done is she's used the Cambridge uh, podcast called Virtually Anywhere and visualized the story of Virtually Anywhere 
in Second Life and in Open Sim. And for me, this was an eye opener, an absolute eye opener. First of all, how can you just take a podcast? It's a great story on this podcast, but it's just a podcast. So not even a picture of this whole story. And then Doris created this in Second Life. Beautiful 3D buildings. She goes to China, she goes to you know South America. Go ahead, Doris. I'm not taking oh, it away okay. from you. So I don't know. Should I share the screen? Yes, please. Okay. Well, so this this is a PO Destiny in in Kaiki. In Second Life, she's Pionia Destiny. <laughs> it's the same one. So uh, as you can see here in this area, this is our social area where we have our parties. And let me see if I can. Well, now you see all the bunch. Uh, OK, here. I have a trouble with my, so this was the scene. In Evo, we wanted to show immersive stories, okay, and also transmedia. So what uh, Heike is telling you about is it's a project I worked with my students in Second Life. That's where it started. As as she also has pointed out, uh, let me go there and show you the slides so you can look at little bit. And Jane says she, she would love to party with us. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. It is fun, always fun. Okay, so this is where we sit and have chats and get together and plan. And... This beautiful, I mean, it's just the immense beauty and what she's put out and it's the, uh, the different scenes for storytelling one of which is Harry Potter, the library with the Harry Potter characters. Here is just going towards with the camera, wonderful. Wow. No, we lost your voice now, Doris. Uh, you kind of muted accidentally here in, in. Oh, wow, that, is that the Harry Potter library? Yeah, and she accidentally muted in Zoom, Doris. Okay, now I am in Zoom again. So you can listen okay. to me? Yeah. Okay, I don't know what happened with my uh, voice in OpenSync. Uh, this is the beauty of, of using Zoom and the virtual world. It is uh, difficult sometimes for students, the, the learning curve is, 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 you know, they have to learn some basic things that if you're not used to this it takes time okay so what you can do is you set the scene and the scenes in the virtual world and then you bring your students in zoom okay so we're having like two tools working together to show and use the what happens here uh, well this is um, a scene that i prepared and the theme was harry potter so you can bring your students here and talk about the story or they can uh, use this and create their own stories and that's what threat media is about you had an original work that then in one medium like in my case virtually anywhere is a podcast is a series of audio series that is from uh, it's by Cambridge assessment. Uh, it's so beautiful, Dawn, the audio, that when I was listening to it, it was like I was imagining the scenes, okay? And I said, okay, we can have this, not only the audio, but the real scene in a virtual world. So that's what we did, and that's where everything originated. And then we got, I came across fan fiction. And fan fiction is something that students do, you know, they love uh, changing things. They don't want the ending of a story, so they get a new one and they write it down and they use the same characters, but in these different situations. So for the EVO sessions, we wanted to uh, give uh, participants uh, places where they can use their imagination and create new stories. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a, a special guest. Bernie Sanders. 
if you look, if you recognize him, okay. So yes, when we were in the middle of the classes, that was uh, on the news, or it was fun. Okay, I said, okay, we're going to take Bernie. We're going to invite him to our scenes. So um, uh, again, this is one of the scenes. Here you have my slides. You wanted to have my slides. This is the uh, here. You can if you just click here. Then you're going to watch a video, okay? So you can use different media in world as the same as you do in, in Second Life. And this is the audio and, oh, it says error connection. Must be my, my internet today. Or somebody messed that with the, <laughs> with, the, with the presentation. Okay, let me get back to, you know, all of this is ready because this is what we work with. So your invitation to participate today for me was a, a surprise. I didn't know. So, um, but everything is here. So you can come anytime, check it out, look at it. Uh, it takes can a I little just, time. Can I just mention one thing um, that was also a challenge for Doris, but she managed ever so well, is her students some of them were German students or were business students, what have you, they weren't actually, they didn't join Second Life. Yeah, some for time issue reasons, some for restriction of technical equipment, whatever the weather. This is also, could also be our challenge um, that we prepare a certain environment for students like Minecraft, for example, and then they cannot join. So what do you do? And Doris, um, this was also the question that came up uh, by our participants. They said, well, if my students are Chinese, they have no way of joining this virtual world because the VPN doesn't allow it. Yeah. So um, what we then figured out is that, and this is what Doris did, is she, she joined her students in Zoom and shared her screen. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is one of the slides and here you have the three characters of the story and the story or the original story has a six episodes we created two extra episodes and they were uh, set in the country where the students uh, are for uh, from i have students in germany i have students in in argentina so they selected two sites one in uh, that's Pucara uh, de Tilcara in Jujuy, where I am living now, is a, a Inca fortress, and it's a, a place of interest, you know. So we uh, created a, an episode where these three characters, as you can see, here you have them again, but now they are different. This is Paul, Gita, and the professor, because I didn't have this uh, the same. Uh, NPCs that I have in in Second Life. This one is the Second Life version. Okay, this is a part of the second episode. And here, these are the characters in uh, Kitely. Um, again, what I did in in Kitely for the to show what uh, virtually anywhere was about is create the scene, the first episode, the scene where Paul and Gita are discussing about their uh, university uh, work. Okay, they have to prepare a report on a site, archaeological site. They are, they are archaeological students. So they start fighting and arguing about which place to use. So Paul wants to go to visit the Terracotta Army in China. Gita wants to go to Teotihuacan in Mexico. So you get all the elements of the story here. First, they receive an email where the professor says, hey, you have to work together, okay? And these are the two uh, options, select one. But he says it is important that they work together, but they are very different. They have different personalities and they never get along well, okay? So that's what is the, the first episode about, the assignment, that's the name of the so what I do with my students that we listen to the episodes we, uh, while we are discussing the vocabulary of what happened in the episode, uh, I showed them the, 
you know, if we're talking about Teotihuacan, I show the picture of Teotihuacan so they have an idea what it looks like, okay? And also, are you having difficult time with your group coursework? Come to study around, come to study room 42 in the Darwin building at 3 p.m., okay? That's the story. Here, you can also find uh, the materials that we need for this uh, scene, for this episode, the characters, the plot, where it happens, okay? All of these elements are the ones that you have to take into account when you're going to design the scene for your stories. And here you can get, uh, if you click here, you will get a note card that I don't know why it's not working right now. Okay, it comes. Yeah, we have to take it easy. <laughs> there, you can see I have a uh, folder that goes into my inventory and then all, there are all the instructions, okay? Like questions after you listen to the story, we discuss the story, you ask comprehension questions or vocabulary or, you know. The idea is that the students know the characters and they connect with them, okay? So you got the team that supports a Gita and the team that supports a Paul. They are very different. One is very intelligent, smart and responsible and the other one is lazy, okay? So, uh, and this is the room 42 where the second uh, episode happens. Okay, uh, we did this for uh, Kitely, but in Second Life you can find uh, all of the episodes and two episodes uh, that the students, uh, uh, with their stories we created in the in, in world. Okay, I see a lot of people asking questions. Yes, uh, we got a lot of that. Also, we just have a presentation in the virtual world, uh, virtual, virtual world best practices in education. That's one of like, the most important. Uh, and we have set an exhibition with everything there also. Okay, so uh, the good thing is that these are there and then you're taken anywhere. Okay, you have the same idea, you get the same resources. And so, well, this is this is what I did with my students, and also uh, you are invited if you ever come by, you can come here and share a cup of coffee with us. Let me get in there. Okay, this is a, ca a cafe where we can have a class or talk about things. All of these things I found in different themes. You know, there are many. You go uh, jumping from one uh, world to another and you pick up things that are there. You just click, right click, make a copy, and then you have it in your inventory. And then you just use your imagination to put it together, okay? So students can learn, and my teachers can learn how to build this, or they just get the objects and, and just take them out and create the scene. So our sessions for uh, this year was uh, for students to uh, learn, check and think about the possibilities of what they could do. Okay, oh, I am sitting there. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted him to sit down. Okay, so I'm going to touch him. Go, sit down, stop dancing. <laughs> he doesn't want to. Okay, it takes longer. Maybe my connection is not that. Go touch again. Can I, um, there you go. And he sits, you know, so you can create matching images with this. They can create dialogue. So you have the setting. Okay, what are they talking about today? I don't know. These are the affordances of the of Kitely. As you can see, it works as well as it works in Second Life. So it's, and all of this was free. I didn't have to buy all of these things in Second Life. That's that's another big reason why you you know you can use this, and the students also can create things. Okay, so uh, I don't know what else. Uh, we also have a. Um, I'm I'm afraid we'll have to cut it short because the, okay. um, we want to leave it for ten minutes. Also, question and answers, and the other thing is that we started a little late. Um, I'd like to also point out one more thing about uh, why OpenSim is so amazingly rich in uh, objects and the objects as you've just seen now, like the coffee tables in the coffee shop, 
or uh, even the mobile phone on the desk and everything is just so stunningly um, beautiful. Yeah. And why that is, I'd like to share this. Or would you want to say a word about it, Doris? Uh, about mesh yeah about mesh yeah. yeah for example this here is is uh as another is a scene that we use the results of the evil sessions where that the students produce their stories and they recreated the stories took pictures and create a graphic novel with it okay a book that was created in uh in book creator that's another great tool but as you can see Anything, I mean, could be possible here. We have different scenarios, and this is a, a medieval. So, if you're you setting have to a be story, a little bit slow with moving because it takes time to rest, and we, we're getting a lot of. Oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm yeah. looking at it, and it's okay. Can you see that? <laughs> uh -huh. Looking at. And the thing is that this castle, for example, um, at the outset, you where you're standing there, you right and mouse click on this castle and you can select from the settings, copy. Why? Because somebody else has put it somewhere on the open sim regions um, as a mesh object. And uh, does anybody of you know what mesh is? Oh, not really. I don't. <laughs> well, the, it's simple. When, when you want to build something, you can build it in world with using prims, they're called prims, by manipulating prims. The trouble is, if you leave this world, all of your work of creating, modeling, and beautiful houses and trees and what have you, stays behind in this virtual world. And that was the trouble at the beginning of uh, virtual worlds. But now what has happened is um, you can create these 3D objects and it could be just be an apple or a chair or a TV, whatever. You can create these 3D objects in software outside of a virtual world. And the software could be Edge, um, could be Blender, could be any other software for 3D modeling. And then you take these objects and import them into virtual worlds. And then these objects are yours as a creator they stay on your computer they're kind of your uh and and you can import them in various different worlds i mean there are people who create mesh objects for second life and for fortnite and from you know for open sim and they import them everywhere <laughs> because um yes. the, yeah and so they that's how they make money the creators oh. which also m makes them put a lot more effort into the beauty of objects. And um, I'm sorry, we have to stop this story. So you keep okay. floating <laughs> around you, in outer space. I would just <laughs> wanted to show you uh, what it was like before mesh and what is, you can see the difference between mesh and, and for example, this house is not made in mesh. These uh, objects are not mesh. Mm -hmm. So, but you had both, okay? Mm -hmm. This was, you know, something yeah, that you estimated that Second Life uh, is ninety percent mesh and 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 ten percent still the old stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, uh, just some some textures on on objects are very simplified. Mesh is true three D, so the objects look a lot more three D. They're very detailed. The textures are very beautiful. They're done with love. And so this is why Second Life has beautified. And I, I can give you a little bit of an impression of what this what this looked like in time ago. But whilst we're doing this, we ask for we're wrapping up, we're asking for um for um questions and, and questions. Yeah. I wanted to show you this one. So so I, I can't just start the script. The, the presentation now it's at the end of a presentation yes. but do you see this this image here on the left hand side that was in 2009 when second life was at the first peak it started 2006 and this is a dog <laughs> the two dogs on the floor and we are playing with the dogs now today you can go and this is here on the right hand side you can go horseback riding mm -hmm. in these kind of environments do you see the level up? 
yeah yes. uh, similar with um mm-hmm. avatars graphics the graphics of the avatars that were there in 2009 was this is what we looked like <laughs> but today this person it's has so sh- shine in the eye they have facial expressions they smile they you know it's amazing the, the beauty so uh, this is where mesh comes in that all mesh bodies now mesh clothing mesh bodies what have you and this is why this is why this this you know learning arabic in in second life has become that beautiful learning greek in santorini island in second life uh, learning japanese the, the, these wow. the, the pictures you never forget with every vocabulary that you learn Spanish in Cuba. Yeah, the vocabulary stuck in your mind. So language learning in Second Life is so impressive. Yeah. Well, that that, that is really very amazing. Um, do, do we have any questions in the audience? Okay, we have um, Andrea. Andrea says it's very, really, very impressive. And um, I think he was asking about whether or not there they, this can be do, played on low tech. Mm-hmm. And, and I, um, I recommend it co-spaces for tablets because it's the only 3D version that I know of that works on tablets apart from Minecraft. Mind you, Minecraft works on everything. It works on mobile devices, it works on the HMD, it works on the laptop, it works on a PS4, PS2, game station. Minecraft is incredible and it's so popular and it's wonderful. Go for Minecraft. <laughs> no, but the graphics, uh, I mean, they're amazing in Open Sim and Second Life. And I, I can see that, you know, a- Andrea says that for adult learners, um, Minecraft is be too, like, too childish, childlike. And I think for my adult learners, for, for my university students and graduate students, um, yeah, open sim, sim is the way to go, and the, um, the the really natural settings and different settings, different settings, and the Harry Potter and um, the coffee shop, and oh my gosh, and all the different media that you can incorporate into open sim. Um, that's just amazing, and I was wondering if we could call is could host. Um, the next co- virtual conference in Open Sim. Uh, Jay, you put it in a nutshell. I couldn't say it any better. <laughs> That's your closing closing word for you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Heike and Doris. Thank you very much. Um, this is a wonderful. Um, open sim for ELT and it's just amazing the the slides that you share with the different cities and learning different languages and um, wow I you know I think that's the way to go to be immersed in that language environment and learn the language in the environment not just in the classroom and I think this is wonderful thank you so much for taking the time to share with us thank you and, and if I just say, can say one closing sentence is mm-hmm. Second Life and Open Sim has often been called an old technology, yeah? Outdated, old, I mean, who goes there, what have you? But look how old is Microsoft? <laughs> and it gets better and better, right? So yep. Second Life has gotten better and better. It yeah. has been, it had been forgotten for a while, but due to the pandemic, yes. Second Life has had a beautiful revive and recalibration and re-entering. There's approximately 1 million people concurrently online. There are 57 million accounts being created. And OpenSim is said to be twice as large as Second Life, but nobody knows how large it is. And how many people, because there's so many private sims, you know, but it, it truly is a wonderful, uh, it's, it's a blessing to have it. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, I, we, can I say something? What I yes, like the most, yes. what I like the most about virtual world is that 
you just need an, a, an idea and imagination and, and it's so beautiful to see it you know come true even if it is a virtual world but uh, there's no thing that you cannot do okay you you and for students and 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 again this uh, this uh, project of virtually anywhere happens during the pandemic you know, I, I, don't, I, I am not even working in a university where I have a lot of students. I just have students online from different places, different ages, and you just create it and then adapt uh, those spaces for them to learn. Uh, and I know this story. So right now you got the original, but I also use the same story with the same character, but for, for a lower level. This was designed for a B1, B2, and, and I use it with A1 just telling them the stories in simple words. So that's thanks to, uh, it's a lot of work, but it's brilliant. I mean, this is something that you enjoy. I enjoy a lot. <laughs> so I invite you to come. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you yes. for inviting us and listen to so us. Much for sharing, yes. Um, so we'll, we'll, I'll need to conclude the session because we're having our sessions back to back and, and let's give them a round of applause. Our Heike and Doris, thank you.